Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. So today we are at one of our local spots, Turlock Poker Room in Turlock, California. We're gonna jump into it. We are on the list currently, about to start another game. So hey, let's get into it. We're excited. Let's get some fun hands for the vlog, fingers crossed, and let's run it up. So, all right guys, as always, please hit that like and subscribe button and let's get into the hands. Let's go. So moving on here to the very first notable hand of the vlog, in this one, I'm gonna look down at red aces under the gun and I'm gonna make it $12. The low jack and the high jack are gonna decide to come along. So with $40 in the middle, we're gonna see a good flop for our hand, even though we're gonna be out of position. The flop's gonna come five, four, four, all black. Now I do think there is some merit to checking here and looking to check raise. The only issue is that that's gonna look really strong when I do it. So I decide just to see bet here $20, just like I would mostly do with everything in my range here, even though this board should definitely not hit me, but I'm also gonna have my fair share of over pairs, just like I do right now. So the low jack's gonna make the call and the cutoff's gonna decide to fold. So two ways to the turn, we're gonna see another good card for our hand, which is gonna be the queen of diamonds. So now I only have about a pot size bet left and I just decide to rip it in here. Looking back at it, I don't know if I love this because what's he actually going to be calling me with here is a hand like pocket sevens, eights, nines, jacks. Are they really going to call me here once the queen hits? Probably not. So I'm really only going to get called by something that has a lot of equity versus my aces. So looking back at it, I really don't love it and I probably would have done something a little bit different. But all in all, I really can't complain too much. It's just nice seeing a pot getting pushed in our direction. So hopefully this will switch our momentum and get us moving in the right direction. Moving on to the next one. In this one, we're gonna have an early limp here from a short stack and the action is gonna fold to me in middle position. We look down at five, four suited and I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up here to $12. And I already know I'm gonna call this off here if the short stack decides to go with it. And that's indeed what happens. Action folds back to him. He rips in his last 23 and we go ahead and make the call. And now at this point, I'm just hoping that my cards are live and we're not dominated. And well, as you can see, we are dominated and it's a worst case scenario. So we're gonna go ahead and lose this one and we're gonna go ahead and double up a short stack. Moving on to the next one. In this one, there's gonna be three limps in front of me and I'm gonna look down at red ace king. So I decide to make it $16 here and I'm gonna get two callers. One is gonna be from the cutoff who's just gonna cold call, and the other's gonna be the middle position player who limped who's gonna complete. Now the cutoff's gonna be pretty capped here as he just cold called, probably has like a middling strength hand, and the middle position player could have literally anything, but to be honest, none of that matters. We have top top and we're just gonna bet it. So action checks to me, and I bet 30. Now I'm just hoping that these players have something, that they caught a piece of this flop that they can continue, but Unfortunately not, they're gonna relatively quickly here make the fold and we're gonna take this one down. As we move on to the next hand, in this one, under the gun is gonna limp and then plus one is gonna isolate that to $10. And we're gonna look down at black ace king, so we're obviously gonna be putting in another bet here and I go ahead and make it 30. So we're gonna wind up picking up two callers here. The small blind is actually gonna put in the call out of position, which is a bit surprising at the time. And the player who initially limped is also gonna put in the call. And the good player to my right that isolated is gonna make the fold. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop here. The good news is we're gonna be in position. The flop's gonna come jack eight four, all black. Both of these players are gonna start with a check here over to me. So good thing is here, I can put in a C bet if I wanted to, but to be honest, I think it's kind of ambitious here with just ace high. This board definitely hits their range better than mine, even though sometimes I will have pocket jacks, pocket eights, big flush draws, etc. But I do prefer in this instance to go with a check back, and that's what I decide to do. Now this turn is going to be exactly what I was looking for, which is the 10 of clubs. Looking back at it now, I think this is a perfect barrel card here, especially when both players are going to check once again to me. Most likely, I would have heard from one of these players either on the flop or definitely here on the turn. So this is definitely a spot I could have semi-bluffed 
with a lot more equity and try to take this pot down in position. So with that being said, you already know I jacked up this spot and I'm going to decide to check it back. And now we're going to see an amazing river card, which is the five of clubs. So both players, again, are going to check over to me. And now it's just time to go for some value. I'm gauging both of these players are not very strong, obviously, based on the action this hand. So I want to get paid off. So I'm going to bet a pretty small size here as I bet $50. And now, much to my delight, the small blind is going to do something I did not expect. And he's going to announce a raise. He's going to raise to $140. So at this point, there's only one play. It's time to move all in. If I make the call, the 90, it's only going to leave me with about 120 left. So with the size of the pot, jam's the only thing that makes sense here. And we're just hoping that he has a pretty big hand. Hopefully he has a king of clubs, queen of clubs, and we're just coolering him. There also is another possibility that maybe he thinks I'm just getting after this pot, that I'm weak. And to be honest, he might be right in a lot of cases. It just so happens that this time we happen to have it. So we deliver him the bad news as we move all in. And as you can see, our opponent just snap folds. As we move along in the session, in this next one, the very good player again to my right is gonna open when the action folds to him the $10. And I'm in the low jack and I'm gonna look down at ace king with the same exact suits that I just had on the previous hand. And once again, we're gonna three bet to $30. And as a quick side note, this is actually going to be one of the most interesting hands in the entire session, so make sure you stick around. The action is going to pretty quickly fold around the table here, and when it gets back to him, he's going to decide to make the call. So with $60 in, we're going to see a really good flop for our particular hand and our range that's going to come king 7 5 with two diamonds. So for a few moments, I'm going to stop the actual voiceover, and I'm going to let you hear the actual table audio I think it gives it a really fun and unique dynamic of what it actually feels like to be in these games. Is that you? I don't know, let's find out. Funny. There's a little down bat from what I heard on the street. Down bat. Already gave you. Really? Wait. So he takes my down bet and basically tells it to go f off. And then he hits me with the old check raise to $60. Now I'll be honest, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But if I'm folding ace king here to a $40 raise in position, then I might as well rack up and go home. And I'm not ready to do that quite yet. So I make the call. So with $180 in, we're going to see the turn which is the three of hearts. Now on the surface, this seems like a very good card for my hand. It feels like if I was ahead before, I'm still ahead now. Based on the action of this hand, it would be hard to put him on a hand like four six or a hand like pocket threes. But to my surprise, he fires again. This time for $100. Yep, I don't like it. I still don't like it one bit. Now, with all that being said, is exactly why I cannot fold Ace King here, and I'm going to decide to make the call yet again, and now I'm just hoping for a very clean river, and I most certainly do not want to see diamonds come in. So with 380 in, we're going to head to the river, and we're going to see the absolute worst river card that you can imagine. It's going to be the Queen of Diamonds. Mother, and now he just instantly jams, and we just absolutely hate this. This is a brutal spot to be in. He's fired three shells, so it's either an absolute bluff or it's a monster. I don't think there's anything in between. So, now let me give you a little backstory on this player. He and I played on the outer table, and I saw him take a similar type of line with an air ball bluff. Now, granted, it was much smaller, and the bet sizing was way smaller than what he's done with me here, and he was in position, not out of position, so I really feel like he just has it this time. Now, listen, I know the GTO gangsters out there are going to be losing it in the chat and in the comments saying, 
There's no way you can just fold ace-king here. It's so exploitable, yada, yada, yada. And that's 100% true. But in live low-stakes poker, how many people are taking this line as a bluff? Maybe the top 1% of the pool? And look, if it turns out that he's putting a massive play on me right here with a triple barrel massive bluff, then I'm just going to tap the table and give him his props because it's a heck of a play. But in this case, I'm going to use my experience and I'm going to fold this hand and look for a better spot because I feel like I'm beat. And in game, unfortunately, he didn't show me his hand, but he did tell me emphatically that I made a really good fold. And later on, we were playing at an outer table once again, and he did tell me he had pocket sevens for a flop set. I'll tell you, I'll tell you like when it's towards the end or something like that. Moving on to the next one. In this one, the good player again to my right is going to isolate a couple early limps to $16. And we're on the button and we look down at 8-7 of hearts. So we're obviously going to be putting in the flat call here in position. And the only other player that's going to decide to come along is the big blind. So we're going to go three ways to a flop here. And the flop's going to come ace-9-5 rainbow. The action is going to quickly check over to me. And I think about betting briefly, but my hand's pretty much trash at this point. I only just have a gut shot. Nothing else is really going to be amazing for me. And then just boom. You ask, you shall receive. We hit the dream six of hearts on the turn here. We spike the gutter and we are totally disguised here. What a dream spot. So now the action is going to get checked over to the cutoff and he's going to put a wager out here. He decides to bet $18. I briefly think about maybe putting in a raise here, but that's going to look super strong and I want to keep him on the hook. So I decide just to call and that's going to get rid of the big blind. So with $84 in, we're going to see the river, which is great. It's the deuce of spades. And now he's basically going to give up here and check back. And we need to get some value out of this hand. So I decide on a bet of $50, hoping to get a crying call here from an ace. But as you're going to see right now, he's pretty quickly just going to fold here. So he obviously doesn't have an ace. Probably just didn't have anything. But that's okay. We're still going to take down this little one. It's always great having a pot coming back our way. So moving on to the last hand of the blog. In this one, there's going to be five limps in front of me. Yeah, you heard that right. There's five limps in front of me. And I look down at the sailboats here. So with the fours, I could just call, but I kind of like taking the aggressive route. Maybe I can thin the field here. It's also really hard to flop a set, so I can rep a lot of stuff here when I isolate. So that's what I decided to do, take the aggressive route. And who knows, maybe I'll take it down here. So I make it 22. And everyone's going to fold except for just one player here. The big blind's actually going to call. So with a little bit more than 40 in, we're going to see a bad flop for my hand, obviously, because they're fours. It's going to come queen, nine, eight with two diamonds. Now, this is not my most favorite type of flop. This is very dynamic, and it's going to hit his calling range, especially at a position very wide here. And if I had an overpair, I probably wouldn't love it, especially if I got raised. But with the fours, we have a plan. We were going to bet anything that comes out, and this is going to have to do. So we bet 26, and luckily for us, our opponent is going to make the fold. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. That's the last notable hand that I was able to record during the session. There is one more hand that I will share with you guys that really put us into Profitville towards the end of the session, but I will share that with you guys right now in the outro. I did not want to call. I was like, please fold. Please fold. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. So just wanted to recap the session from Turlock and also go over those last two prominent hands that were pretty important. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to capture them. I apologize. But let's run through them real quick. In this first one, we're going to have a straight open to $20, which is a massive open for this size of a game. The ash is going to fold to us, and we are on the button, and we're going to look down at pocket aces. Wow. 
So a super dreamy spot here. I just go ahead and put in the raise right now. Let's make it $80 to go. The action folds around back to this player. He thinks about it for a little bit, a little bit of Hollywood I feel like. I feel like he has a really big hand. And he puts in a four bet. So he assures us that he indeed does. He puts in a four bet to $240. So we are definitely loving life right now in this instance. I am not gonna try to get him to fold a hand here. Let's have him make a giant mistake or cooler him if need be. So we move all in right now. He snaps us off and we run it out and we are clean. So we get the full double here and we did indeed cooler him. Aces versus Kings, not much you can do there, but I'm glad to be on the good side of it. So moving on to this last one. In this one, plus one is gonna open the $10 and the Ash is gonna fold around to the cutoff who's gonna three bet to $50. We're next to act on the button and we look down once again, I kid you not, pocket aces. <laughs> so crazy. Uh, this is only about 15 minutes after the last hand. So I am not a mathematician guys, but I do know you are not supposed to get aces <laughs> that fast. So we're running hot. Let's take advantage of it. I go ahead and put in the raise right now. I make it 150. Original Razor is going to quickly fold. Action back to the cutoff. Now he only has around $300 to start the hand with effective. So I am pretty sure he's going to jam or just fold. And he does the opposite. He puts in this uh, straight call. So a little surprising. Not sure what that means, but uh, I do know we are pushing on any flop. Pot's already going to be too big. If he gets there, he gets there. So be it. We are not folding aces. We have a plan and we're gonna stick to it. So we're heading to the flop here and the flop comes seven, five, 10. All red, all diamonds, not great for pocket aces, especially when they are of the black variety. But player thinks about it for a minute and he rips it. So don't love it, but hey, if he got there, he got there. No way we're folding aces here. And he flips over ace, queen of diamonds. So we are gonna lose a big one here with aces. We win a big one, lose a big one. Aces giveth, aces take it away. So no worries, that is the story of life. That is how it rolls. Cannot complain when it goes well. Can't complain when it goes bad. That's gonna do it for the hands on this one, guys. Recapping the session, uh, I was in the game total for about $400. I topped up a couple times, wound up cashing out for around $953. So still a nice profitable session even though it was very swingy. All right, so you guys are probably sick and tired of me rambling already, so let me get up out of here. Um, as usual, guys, please hit that like, subscribe button if you're not already. Leave me a comment, engage with me, and I will get back to you. I truly appreciate all the engagement from you guys. And yeah, let's keep it moving. I will catch you guys on the next one. Be safe, take care, deuces.